robbing us of our culture, history, language, and identity. The ripping apart of family units and royal bloodlines. The absolute and complete torment of our fathers and mothers before us. The Middle Passage was a devastating event, culminating into the displacement and death for millions of Africans and their descendants around the world. This event left the diaspora dehumanized, constantly seeking the freedom that humanity was supposed to provide. Though at times we were pinned as being docile, complacent, and submissive in our pain, today we have the opportunity to tell the whole story. A story of redemption and righteousness. A story in which Africans exemplify courage, determination, and the splendid magnificence of the human spirit. The persistent resistance of African people during enslavement, fighting for their humanity, made them world leaders. Their struggle, endowed as a model, driving all of humanity forward. What up, African world? It's Home Team here, and I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And as usual, if you like these videos and would like to support in the continued production, gaining access to sources, courses, and exclusive videos, you can support the Home Team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Today. We're going to talk about the top 10 greatest slave rebellions in the African diaspora. So let's get right into it. Starting off at number 10, we have the slave rebellion at San Miguel de Guadalupe. In 1526, the settlement of San Miguel de Guadalupe was founded by a Spanish explorer named Lucas Vasquez. It was the first European settlement in what became the continental United States. Scholars aren't exactly sure where this settlement was within the United States. Some say Georgia, and others even say near Jamestown, Virginia. Regardless, the Africans imported there refused to be enslaved. Vasquez had brought a group of roughly 100 seasoned enslaved Africans and natives from Spain. The enslaved Africans rebelled with many escaping and taking refuge among some of the other native populations. Ironically, one of the first, if not the first slave rebellion within the continental United States was a successful one. The surviving African slaves were considered the first non-native settlers in the region and were pretty much absorbed into the local population. Coming in at number nine, we have the 1842 slave revolt in the Cherokee Nation. For whatever reason, history tends to ignore all the native Indian tribes that had purchased and mistreated enslaved Africans. The Cherokee were one of the biggest perpetrators of this. The rebellion on Indian Cherokee territory took place in Oklahoma and was the largest escape of a group of slaves that occurred amongst the Cherokee. The slave revolt started on November 15, 1842, when a group of 20 African American slaves owned by the Cherokee escaped and tried to reach Mexico, where slavery had been abolished in 1836. Along their way south, they were joined by 15 slaves escaping from the Creek in Indian Territory. They raided local stores for weapons, ammunition, horses, and mules. The Cherokee amassed a small army along with some Choctaw warriors to pursue them and eventually caught up. Because they were tired and ran out of food and other provisions, they were all rounded up successfully and brought back, with some even being executed for the insurrection. This Cherokee Rebellion was penned, and I quote, as the most spectacular act of rebellion against slavery among the Cherokee Nation. For number eight, we have one of the most popular rebellions in American history, Nat Turner's Rebellion. Nat Turner, even as a child, was said to possess an unusual sense of purpose. Via hindsight, we can all understand why. It was as if Turner was destined to show the world the magnificence of the human spirit. Driven by prophetic visions and joined by a host of followers, Nat Turner and about 70 armed enslaved men and free blacks set off to slaughter the white neighbors who enslaved them. In the early hours of the morning, 
they killed Turner's master, his wife and children with axes. By the end of the next day, the rebels had attacked about 15 homes and killed between 55 and 60 whites as they moved toward their promised land. An idea advanced greatly through his religious vigor. The rebellion was famously put down and Turner was eventually captured and killed. But the way in which he used the religion of his enslavers to turn against them and rally the troops was nothing short of spectacular. And today, Nat Turner is immortalized for it in American history. Next, at number 7, we have the Stono Rebellion. The Stono Rebellion was the largest slave revolt ever staged in the 13 colonies. On Sunday, September 9th, 1739, a day free of labor, about 20 slaves under the leadership of a man named Jemmy provided his enslavers with a painful lesson on the African desire for freedom and liberty, the very founding precepts of American identity. According to some sources, many of the enslaved Africans were actually warriors from Angola and were trained in warfare. They gathered at the Stono River and raided a store, executing the white owners and placing their victims' heads on the store's front steps for all to see. They moved on to other houses in the area killing the occupants and burning the structures, marching through the colony towards St. Augustine, Florida, where under Spanish law, they would all be free. Not all enslaved blacks joined the rebellion, however, and some actually hid their masters. As they marched toward Florida, they reportedly shouted, Lukango, meaning liberty in their native Angolan language. Although some did make it to Florida, the majority of the fighters were killed by colonists who rallied the troops. Coming in at number six, we have the First Maroon War on the Caribbean island of Jamaica. The First Maroon War was a conflict between the Jamaican Maroons and the colonial British authorities that started around 1728 and continued until the peace treaties of 1739 and 1740. This was one of the first successful slave rebellions in all of the Caribbean. In 1655, the British defeated the Spanish colonists and took control of most of Jamaica. After the Spanish fled, Africans escaped to the mountains and created maroon communities. The British could not at all gain a stronghold over the maroon communities in Jamaica and were consistently halted by maroon ambition. The British eventually conceded that they could not defeat the Maroons, so they came to an agreement with them instead. One of the greatest leaders of the Maroon communities in Jamaica was a woman the Jamaicans call Queen Nanny. She was born of the Ashanti people and escaped slavery starting a Maroon community in the mountains. Some call her the Obia woman. Obia largely deriving from traditional African spiritual beliefs from Ghana. Following some armed confrontations with the British, Queen Nanny and the Maroons were able to maintain their sovereignty. It's because of this history that she became a national hero for Jamaica. Being descended from a Maroon is looked upon as a high honor within Jamaican culture, even unto this day. Next at number five, we have the 1733 St. John Insurrection. One of the earliest slave revolts in North America saw a group of African slaves effectively conquer the Danish-owned Caribbean island of St. John for a brief time. At the time, most of St. John's slaves were part of the Akan, an African people from modern-day Ghana. Plagued with widespread illness, droughts, and harsh slave codes, in November 1733, a group of high-ranking Akans began to plot against their Danish enslavers. The severity of the resistance made it one of the earliest and longest slave uprisings in the Americas. For several months, the enslaved Akans rebelled, directing their anger toward the white estate managers with the aim of overthrowing them and taking control of the island. The rebellion began when a group of slaves used smuggled weapons to kill their Danish enslavers. Danish soldiers inside a fort of a plantation called Coral Bay was taken over. Another 150 conspirators soon converged on the island's other plantations, killing several white colonists and eventually seizing command of most of St. John. 
After six months of a calm rule over much of the island, French and Swiss troops from Martinique helped the Dutch regain control over the island and quell the rebellion. Coming in at number four, we have the Ganga Zumba Slave Rebellion. Ganga Zumba was the first leader of a massive runaway slave settlement in Brazil. Zumba was an enslaved African who escaped bondage on a sugar plantation and eventually rose to the position of highest authority, literally creating his own kingdom in Brazil. This tremendous achievement gave him the title Ganga Zumba, meaning Great Lord. Ganga was said to be African royalty as he was the son of a princess from the Congo Empire. During warfare with the Portuguese, he was captured as a prisoner of war and sent off to Brazil. Ganga helped to form maroon communities of former enslaved Africans in Brazil, which later formed into a well-organized kingdom in which he became king. By the 1670s, Ganga Zumba had a palace, three wives, guards, ministers, and devoted subjects at his royal compound called Macaco. The compound consisted of 1,500 houses, which housed his family, guards, and officials, all of which were considered royalty. It's so fitting that a prince of the Congo Empire would continue his royal lineage by literally creating an empire of his own under the worst conditions possible. In many ways, Ganga affirms the importance of knowing who you are. His ability and determination to maintain his royal status under any circumstance exemplifies African excellence. Breaking our top three, we have the Zanj Rebellion. The Zanj Rebellion was a major uprising against the Islamic Abbasid Caliphate in southern Iraq. The rebellion is believed to have involved enslaved Bantu-speaking people, or the Zanj, who had originally been captured from the coast of East Africa and were brought to the Middle East. It grew to involve many slaves and free men from several regions of the Caliphate and claimed tens of thousands of lives. Some historians attest that the Zanj Rebellion was, and I quote, one of the bloodiest and most destructive rebellions which the history of Western Asia records. The Zanj absolutely brought total hell to the Abbasid government. They were able to combat the superior arms of the Abbasid government by waging guerrilla warfare against their opponents. They became adept at raiding towns, villages, and enemy camps seizing weapons, horses, foods, and captives, and freeing fellow slaves. They built their own empire and conquered some regions within Abbasid rule, minting their own coins and even collecting taxes. After lasting several years and weakening the Abbasid Caliphate, it was finally put down. But the legend of the Zanj still persists today as it shook Western Asia nearly to its core. Coming in at number two, we have the Gaspar Yanga Rebellion. Gaspar Yanga was an enslaved African leader of a maroon colony in the highlands of Veracruz, Mexico, during Spanish rule. Some scholars proclaim that Mexico had the second largest number of enslaved Africans after Brazil. Around 1570, Yanga led a band of slaves in escaping to the highlands near Veracruz, Mexico. Under Gaspar's leadership, they successfully and fiercely fought to maintain their freedom for more than 30 years in the Mexican highlands. The Spanish sent troops in attempts to take over the territory and re-enslave Gaspar and his community. Their attempts were greatly frustrated by the Maroons and the Spaniards could not at all gain a conclusive victory for years. Heavy losses on both sides drew the Spaniards to sign a treaty based on Gaspar's terms in 1618. Like Ganga Zumba, a knowledge of self was a driving force for Gaspar's resistance and ultimate triumph. Gaspar Yanga was said to be a member of a royal family, a prince from modern-day Gabon. In the late 19th century, Yanga was named as a national hero of Mexico and the settlement he formed, located in today's Veracruz province, was renamed as Yanga in his honor. Today, 
The town reportedly hosts the Carnival of Negritude every August 10th in honor of the legendary African hero. Gaspar is no doubt one of the greatest African princes in world history, and his legacy is testament to the importance of knowing who you are. And finally, coming in at number one, we have the Haitian Revolution. We all knew it was coming. The Haitian Revolution was the greatest slave uprising, not just for African diasporic history, but world history. There was no greater slave rebellion in ancient or modern history. The Haitian Revolution not only had vibrato, but it led to the formation of an entire state. It struck fear in the hearts of enslavers and inspired countless slave rebellions all across the Americas. Nat Turner himself is said to have been inspired by the Haitian Revolution. In fact, because the Haitians conquered Haiti and kicked out the French enslavers, the French were prompted to sell Louisiana to America. It's amazing that Haitian ambition even shaped American history itself. The success of the Haitian Revolution shook the Americas to its core and was a defining moment in the history of the African diaspora. One of the most interesting things about the Haitian Revolution that spearheaded its success was its ability to clean house domestically. The Haitians already knew that once they began their revolution, other slaves would conspire against it and side with the French. Thus, the Haitians largely took care of that problem first, getting rid of potential treasonous people, purifying themselves of fear before taking on the larger enemy. Most slave uprisings failed due to other slaves aiding their oppressor. The Haitians very intelligently and strategically outmaneuvered potential threats to their total takeover of Haiti. The use of the environment around them and driven by their traditional African belief, the Haitians under their primary leader Toussaint Louverture outwit all the European powers that sought to enslave them and thrived. Today, because of this glorious history and this refusal to be enslaved, the nation of Haiti survives today. Well, I'm all out, guys. The ideas of liberty, justice, and freedom has seldom been associated with enslaved African people and their descendants. But ironically, African people were the ones upholding these ideas, dressing themselves in the full armor of moral superiority. African people and their descendants in the diaspora have always reminded the world what it really means to be human. If you like these videos and would like to see more, you can support the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself and remember your ancestors. Peace.